does Canon have a major flaw in their EOS R system cameras, one that affects every Canon camera made since 2018. This includes the R5, the EOS R6, the R6 Mark II, the EOS R, the RP, and the list goes on. Well, stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, it really does help this channel grow, and it keeps you up to date on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. The hot shoe coming loose on cameras has been a, well, decades-old problem, and it's been an easy fix. So why are Canon EOS R5, R6, R3 owners complaining that their hot shoe's coming loose or falling off completely? Why has it become such a big deal? Well, until recently, it's been fairly easy to tighten if your hot shoe comes loose. This is the Canon EOS 70D, my camera, and I've never done this before. And once I found my glasses, this became very easy to do. All I needed was a small slot screwdriver to remove this small metal plate. And once I finally got it loose, it requires a little bit of wiggling here from the center to the bottom and then on the other side. And once you've gotten it out of the way, then simply use a Phillips bit to tighten. That's it. And if you've been shooting for decades and you've had something in that hot shoe most of that time, you've probably encountered this problem, that hot shoe come loose. And then with a simple screwdriver, it's easy to fix. No muss, no fuss, and very little real risk to damaging the camera. However, when Canon migrated to the EOS R system in 2018, they changed the design of their cameras and how the hot shoe can be tightened if it becomes loose. The screws are no longer accessible from the outside of the camera. To access the hot shoe screws, you have to go through multiple steps from loosening the four screws around the viewfinder and then a multitude of screws around the camera case from the front of the camera that are hidden underneath this plastic badging to the sides, to the back, but the scariest part of all is when it comes to removing the back. You have to use a little bit of force to pry it loose, but you don't want to use too much because there is a chance that you could tear the ribbon cable if you're not careful, which would render the camera inoperable. But this repair can be done, and it can be done slowly and methodically without damaging the camera if you're up to the task. And you see, this is where people's frustration is coming from. It's not that all Canon EOS R cameras are in effect defaulty and falling apart. They have this major fatal flaw with them. Well, this is no different than how DSLRs function. That hot shoe, if you're using it on a daily basis, can come loose, will come loose. And if you're a photographer, if you've been shooting in the field for decades with various devices attached to the hot shoe, such as a flash or an external recorder, a monitor or something else, then you've probably had this happen and you've probably fixed it yourself. But with Canon's new EOS R system since 2018, Canon EOS R5, the Canon EOS R3, the R6, the R10, the R7, the R50, EOS R, EOS RP, and I'm not going to mention the EOS R100. Well, you see, to repair the hot shoe, you have to go through a rather involved process. It's probably going to take you an hour of your time. And if you're not familiar with taking apart electronics, then yeah, this is a pretty scary repair to do and you are at risk of damaging your camera if you're not careful. And that's why people are getting upset because they feel that they have to spend anywhere from two to $400 to get this repaired and it's time away from their camera. Whereas before, just to simply screw things, those four screws to tighten them up, it didn't take more than about a minute or two. I mean, the, the most difficult part was finding where you put your screwdriver last. However, if you do have relatively steady hands, you might want to consider watching Brett's video on how to repair a Canon EOS R6 hot shoe if it comes loose. It is very methodical. He takes you slowly from one screw to another. He doesn't skip any steps and even lets you be aware of certain challenges along the way, such as how to find certain screws because they're covered by certain rubber flaps and how to put those rubber flaps back. And of course, once he's fixed it, he then takes you through a same slow methodical place of putting those screws back one by one and using Loctite so you won't have to go through this process again. And I get that it's a little bit scary. And even myself, when I first saw this, I watched the video the first time. I thought, you know what, there's no way I'm going to do this. And then after watching it a second and a third time, I thought, you know what, this isn't so bad. By having Brett's video right there and going through it one by one, piece by piece, making sure I've got all the tools and the Loctite ready ahead of time, I thought, you know what, maybe this isn't so hard. I've certainly taken apart other devices that are a little bit more complicated and some other devices like an Apple Mac Mini, which are very difficult to get into and have really small screws in really tight places. 
this is a repair that I think most of us can do. Now, if you have hand spasms, which I do get once in a while, or if your hands are not steady, then I definitely wouldn't recommend <laughs> this approach. I wouldn't recommend trying to fix the camera yourself. Take it to Canon or any other author authorized electronics repair center. Um, and with those third party centers, you're probably gonna pay a little bit less, closer to around $200, whereas where with a Canon authorized repair center, you're gonna spend a little bit more. But again, a special thanks to Brett at Richard's Vacuum Center for this video on how to fix the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. But also a special thanks to you, Brett, for letting me use your B-roll in this video because trying to explain how easy or how difficult it is to do this job without showing some overlays or some B-roll, um, it's an impossible task. But I really do think the way you put together this video, the way you, you're teaching us the tutorial, it's very basic. Well, I wouldn't say it's very basic. I mean, you shot it in a way and edited it in a way that it seems so simple, so basic to do. And, um, you know, I, I think if the hot shoe ever comes loose on my EOS R5, I'll certainly try it. But I also wonder how, how common is this problem? I've been shooting with a Canon EOS R5 for three years, and I always have something in the hot shoe. However, in Studio A here, I have my Canon EOS R5 on a tripod, a Manfrotto tripod, it doesn't move from the situation, and I have a Ninja 5 external recorder on tapped, on tapped, on top, along with an HDMI cable down to the camera. And it's never come loose. It actually feels very firmly in place. But again, nothing is moving. You're not have, you're not twisting the camera, you're not walking, you're not causing, um, how should we say, vibrations or stress that could cause those screws to come loose. And another thing too, in the video where Brett was talking about these screws and he was pulling them out, he said two of them seemed to be almost completely in place and they had some Loctite in there, but the other two screws didn't appear to have any Loctite in place and they had almost completely fallen out. So I think what we're seeing is those people that are having problems are actively using their camera, but it might be situations where during the manufacturing process, somebody on the assembly line didn't apply enough Loctite and it could be coming loose. So in those situations where, but the thing is, if Canon is doing the work, they're not gonna tell you they didn't apply enough Loctite. If you do it yourself, well, then you could, but you've done the work yourself. So I can't imagine they're gonna give you any money back on the deal, but at least you will know. And if you wanna stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors or other tutorials like this where I, I find out issues, and some of you have yes told me about this, it wasn't until I came across Brett's video that it was succinct enough and explained the issues concisely that I thought I can put together this video without it seeming too long-winded and complex and wordy. Thanks a lot, Brett, I appreciate your effort and thank you for watching at home. And if you wanna stay up to date on all the minor news and rumors, all those things that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well then go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Now we're coming to the end of July. We just have one more week left. As we enter August, I expect news and rumors to start to pick up on what cameras we might be getting announced this fall. We've already gotten some tidbits or some teases on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1, but I can't wait to hear what's gonna happen with Panasonic. Are we gonna see the S1H Mark II, the S1 Mark II this fall? Perhaps, what about the Nikon Z6 Mark III and the Nikon Z7 Mark III? or what's coming from Canon, what's coming from Sony. I expect some really wonderful camera announcements. I expect the fall to be really packed full of all sorts of goodness. So don't forget to subscribe and choose all notifications. And right now there's a huge amount of sales on right now. If you wanna use my affiliate links down below here, I've also got them in the description. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I get about two to 6% back that go to helping support this channel. And right now there are deals on everything from Sony to Panasonic, from Nikon to Canon, although I'm not seeing any deals on Pentex or OM Systems at this point. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.